In this video, I'm going to talk about dividing polynomials using long division. Uh, of course, there's synthetic division as well, but in this video, I'm going to focus on long division because sometimes you're asked to do that. Now, if you've forgotten long division from when you were a kid, or maybe you're still, I mean, technically, you're probably still a kid, but maybe not, who knows. Anyway, let's do a little bit of the standard long division that you would see in any uh, early elementary or mid-elementary or whenever it starts in your area uh, classroom. So I have 1,572 divided by 12. So I set it up like this. And I want to see, okay, well, how many times can 12 go into 1? Well, it can't go into 1, so I have to start over the 15. From there, it goes 1 time. So 1 times 12 is 12. I bring these sort of cancel out. I bring down my remainder of 3, and then I do 37. Uh, I end up, how many times does 12 go into 37? Well, 3 times. And it works uh, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, and then end up with 12. And then finally, uh, how many times does 12 go into 12? Well, obviously 1 time. And you may put a 0 down here, or maybe you do the double lines when there's no remainder. So I can say that uh, 100 and, uh, 1,572 divided by 12 is 131. And I could always check it by going back and doing a little bit of multiply. And it checks out. So the uh, that sort of setup is what we're dealing with here, except it's a little more complicated. Here's what we're starting out with. Actually, let me flip it and start with this one because it doesn't have uh, the kind doesn't have a coefficient in front of the x squared. So what I'm dealing with here is uh, x squared minus 3x minus 40 divided by x plus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and put x plus 5 here. I'm going to make my little long division setup. If you're like me, I kept doing the thing where it made it into a square root, but I do algebra all day, so maybe you don't. Obviously, x doesn't go, x plus 5 can't go into x squared, so I'm going to have to go over to this term. And then what I want to do is sort of just look at the first terms. What do I have to multiply x by to get rid of x squared? And in this case, it's just x. So I do x times x, which is x squared, and x times 5, which is plus 5x. Here's the part that visually is unappealing to me. Now, we'll do x squared minus x squared, and which is fine. Those cancel. But then you have to think to yourself, negative 3 plus 5x. But what I tend to do instead, or sorry, negative 3 minus plus five, uh, positive 5x. What I tend to think instead is, OK, I'm going to go ahead and just change all the signs here. So I'm going to put minus, and then I'm just going to make this a minus 5x. That way I don't have to think negative 3 uh, minus 5x, you know, whatever it happens to be. Because visually, to me, that would have said negative 3 plus 5, so I would have put 2, but that's not correct. So these cancel. Negative 3 minus 5 is, of course, negative 8x. In fact, I did this problem myself earlier, and I actually missed it because I wasn't thinking about what that actually meant. So from here, I need to see how many times does x go into negative 8x. And of course, I want to multiply the 1 that's supposed to be here by negative 8. And I do um, negative 8 times x, which is negative 8x. Then I do negative 8 times 5, which is negative 40. And once again, since in order to make the signs look nice, I'm going to go ahead and since it's minus, I'm going to put a plus here and a plus here. These cancel. These cancel. I end up with no remainder. So I can say that uh, this divided by this is actually x minus 8. Can you check it? Of course. There's my original question. So it does work. Let's look at another one. In this case, it's a little bit longer, but you know, not too much longer. So I'm going to do x plus 2, and then 3x to the third plus 9x squared plus 8x plus 4. Can't go in here. But with two terms, it can. So I have to think, what do I multiply x by to get 3x to the third? So I do 3x squared. Once I do that, it gives me the 3x to the third I'm looking for. And then I do 2 times 3, which is 6x squared. Now this is all subtraction, so I'm going to change any of the signs I need to. Cancel. 9 minus 6 is 3x squared. Bring down your 8x. 
I need to multiply this times 3x. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and change all the signs out. And then, um, what do I multiply the x by to get the 2x? Well, 2, of course. So I end up with the final answer of 3x squared plus 3x plus 2. That's when you have no remainders. It works out fine. You can go ahead and multiply this back in. It should give you this number. What what happens when it's not so pretty? Because at times, I'm guessing when you're a kid, you had ones, uh, you had problems that looked like this. 4,562 uh, 4, divided by 4. This doesn't work out nearly as nicely. Goes in once. Goes in once. Goes in four times. Goes in zero times. So you say uh, 1140 with a remainder of two. That's what you'd say when you're a kid. Not much different now as you get into uh, polynomials. So let's set it up. x minus 1 and all this. There's a couple terms here so I can start working right here. Uh, I have to multiply it by x squared to get that x to the third power minus 1x squared. Now I'm going to do subtract, so I'll change this sign as well. Cancel. Uh, 4x squared. Mm, to make this happen, I have to multiply by 4x. Minus 4x, since it's minus 1 there. Once again, I'm changing the signs out. End up with 3x. And finally, I'm going to deal with um, multiplying by 3. And you get a remainder of 5. So I would say that my answer would be x squared plus 4x plus 3 with a remainder of 5. Now, what does that look like in terms of, uh, well, before I could just add it into it and it made sense. So when I had this type of problem, if I did this times 4 and then I added 2 to it, I could get here because this could take me to uh, uh, 4560 and then I add 2 to get that 2 on the end of it. Same basic concept here. to do this. I don't know uh, kind of where I was headed with it. I think I'm doing everything by uh, I'm mixing and matching. I can't do that. So minus x squared. So I get this and this, which makes uh, plus 3x squared. The x to the third power comes down. Then I have uh, this, which is negative 4, plus 3, which gives me minus x. And then I deal with the minus 3 here. But it's supposed to be plus 2, right? Why is this minus 3 there? That's the remainder comes in. You add the 5 back in, and you end up with exactly what you started with at the beginning. I'm not usually a huge proponent on making people check their work. If you're doing this at home, this might be a really good type of problem to check it on because uh, you can get the answer, or you can get it wrong very easily. Last one, um, sort of a simple one, I guess.
um, x, both of these can't go into this, so you have to go over here. What do I multiply x by to get x squared? Well, just x, of course. And then I do 3 times x, which is plus 3x. I'm doing a subtraction, so I want to change the sign here as well. That way, visually, it just says negative 7 minus 3. And then what do I multiply x by to get uh, negative 10x? Well, negative 10, of course. Uh, since then I want to do a little bit of uh, minus negative here, I'm going to change both signs. So let's test it. This should be our answer. Our answer should be this. x minus 10 with a remainder of 40. So let's go back and do x minus 10 times x plus 3. So you get x squared minus 7x minus 30. But I'm trying to get to plus 10. Well, that's where that 40 comes in. Negative 30 plus 40 gives me that positive 10 that I wanted. So that's it. That's polynomial long division. It's not the most fun thing in the world, but it's also not the hardest thing in the world. Just make sure my suggestion anyway is when you do your subtraction here, uh, go ahead and change this sign as well. It'll make it more visually appealing to you in terms of making sure that you don't make a mistake. Unless you're the type to always think minus negative. I'm not, but maybe you are. Uh, that's my real important tip in terms of avoiding careless mistakes.